Welcome to Faces of Fleet, an interview series from WorkTrack, where we take a more personal look at the many interesting people in Fleet and some of the experiences that help shape them into who they are today. Before we get started, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss an episode. I'm Lauren Fletcher, Executive Editor of WorkTrack, and today I'm chatting with Aaron Gilchrist, VP of Fleet Evangelism at IntelliShift. Like many of the folks I interview on this series, Aaron is no stranger to the fleet industry. As Vice President of Fleet Evangelism, Aaron is building a community of fleet and safety operations managers to help share winning strategies and discover the next groundbreaking technologies that improve the metrics of their organizations and the trajectory of their careers. Within her role, she oversees and hosts IntelliShift's weekly podcast, The Straight Talk on Fleet, where she shares regular insights on improving safety, efficiency, and sustainability within fleets. Prior to joining IntelliShift, Aaron spent 16 years in the automotive industry managing SafeLight's national fleet of commercial vehicles. She previously held roles working in retail management and supply chain where she oversaw how products flowed through the manufacturing, distribution, and logistics processes to reach customers. Welcome, Aaron. Thank you. It's great to be here, Lauren. Good to see I'm you. I'm so glad to have you. <laughs> Let's start with some background. I shared a little bit already, but how did you end up involved in fleet to begin with? Yeah, that's I, I love this question because um, I think none of us set out to be a fleet manager. We kind of fell into it. Um, some of us say we walked by the CFO's office maybe on the wrong day. Um, <laughs> but in my case, <laughs> in my case, when I got recruited to SafeLight, I was in a process analyst role. And I think that my background in safety and DCs, as well as um, process and retail operations, really lended to a good skill set and background for fleet management, but I didn't even know what that was. So during my time as a process analyst, when I started with SafeLight, I got involved in everything. I got involved in our um, safety committee, um, which was risk and fleet. I got involved in philanthropy and just kind of everything I could. And my involvement in the safety committee got me connected with the fleet and risk managers who then said, hey, you'd be a great fit to be a fleet manager. So that's kind of how I fell into my job. And despite me um, resisting at first, um, it, it's been a great run and the fleet industry taught me everything I needed to know. So I uh, ended up having a really fun time and now I still get to be involved in the fleet community in a, in a new way, in a different way, but still feel like I can still feel like a fleet manager. It's great. <laughs> I love it. It's definitely industry that has um, a bit of a steep learning curve when a lot of times when you're asked what fleet is, many people think a fleet of boats. Um, so I think, yes, it's it's something not a lot of people, you know, uh, say in high school, I'm going to be a fleet manager one day. We um, often fall into it and it, it takes a bit of learning and growth. Um, definitely glad that you fell into it for sure. Likewise. <laughs> So you have one of the coolest titles I think I've ever heard, VP of Fleet Evangelism. Can you share a little bit about what that title means and what your responsibilities involve? Right. So it is, it's, it's a great title. I mostly laugh about it, but it, it's actually, it fits me very well because I think that everybody like you and in the fleet community knows that I'm a very, very passionate person. So um, you know, my, my big passions in my professional life are safety and data stewardship and the environment as for sustainability. And I talk about that a lot. I always have. But in this role, I get to talk about that every week on my podcast. So I get to evangelize about things that I think that are on the hearts and minds of fleet managers like myself, um, trying to create this community of people who can interact in a different way than we have been able to in the past, share ideas, best practices. So that's that's one part of it. And I think the other part is um, inside of IntelliShift, I get to be that resident fleet manager. So I get to sit in a fleet manager's chair without a fleet and talk about what we need. How do we want to hear information, see information? How do we want to be sold to? How What products um, are important to us and how do we want to interact from a customer experience and a user experience um, uh, standpoint with what IntelliShift sells, right? So I get, to, I get to sit in that fleet manager's chair and speak on behalf of our prospects and our customers um, because our goal is to help fleet managers elevate their careers and create the most safest and efficient fleets. So um, it's kind of the best of both worlds. So I feel really fortunate. 
I love it. I personally am really passionate about professional advocacy and advocating for the fleet manager and all of the hard work that they do. So I love that companies are taking that viewpoint, especially IntelliShift, um, and making sure that they're doing all of this with that fleet manager in mind. And uh, I can see how you would be the perfect fit for that position. Thank you. It's, been, it's fun. <laughs> So often our past mistakes um, and our past makes a big impact on who we are today. What's a life experience that you've had that changes the way you handle tough situations today? Yeah, I mean, I think there are so many professionally, but I think the most profound um, thing that's happened in my life um, has been losing my husband, Brian, to cancer. And I think that um, it's not just about the losing Brian, it was the whole process, right? This privilege that I had of caring for him and our family through his illness, um, the experience of grieving someone while they're still here, um, working a big job at the same time, ultimately preparing for what I knew was happening, right? They told us from the beginning, that he was terminal. So it, it was that preparing ultimately for this, this loss for myself and the, and my family, my kids. Um, and I think it taught me so much about acceptance, uh, perseverance, um, being present, um, authentic, humble, vulnerable, the things that I think make all of us better people and better leaders. But I think that mostly that what I learned from that experience is love really does conquer all. Um, because like he's still with us in so many ways. And my awareness allows me to see and feel and know this, right? So the awareness piece, if someone offered me a billion dollars to trade in my awareness for what's going on around me, I would turn them down. There's not, there's never going to be enough money for me to trade what I've learned from this experience. And mostly, like I said, this, this awareness, both a self-awareness and awareness of people around me makes me a better person, a better mom, certainly a better leader and professional, um, a better friend and daughter. So all those things. Um, so, you know, I think that's probably the biggest um, situation, but I also think just growing up with a really big family, I have 11 siblings wow. and just, you know, when I think about my spiritual, physical, mental resolve and toughness, I think it really stems from this big family um, that I grew up with. And, you know, when tough situations arise today, I feel like I have this sort of foundation and armor that doesn't put up walls, but rather allows me to fully experience hardships while at the same time, like forging through them with grace and dignity. And so I'm just super grateful for that. I love it. And being grateful for the time that we've been able to spend with people in our lives and what they've done for and, and the people that they've helped um, turn us into, especially somebody as significant as as your spouse and significant other. Um, I do remember when a lot of that was happening. And, and I think you've got a, a tattoo, if I recall correctly, that commemorates and helps you connect and, and stay uh, connected to that. And, and I love that um, quite a bit. Um, Thank you so much for sharing. I know that was very emotional and tough, um, but I think a lot of others have, have gone through that and, and can understand and connect. Um, touching on another personal topic, but hopefully not quite as emotional. Um, what's a past job you've had or a hobby that changes how you operate at work? Well, I think that um, I'll say parenting. <laughs> <laughs> this whole notion that you're bringing like humans into this world, you're raising them, um, helping to shape them for that short time that we have with them, which it, it's so short, and then releasing them into this big world so they can make a better, make it a better place. I mean, and I think it's taught me a lot of humility, certainly vulnerability and awareness. Um, you know, I think the th the three things that I would not trade for all the riches on the planet. The three things that have shaped the way that I conduct myself at work, lead my team, um, my philanthropic leadership, the environmental path that I'm on, um, sort of to make the world a better place, have been humility, vulnerability, and, and awareness. And I think those um, came and have been shaped so much from just the responsibility of caring for these humans <laughs> that I, I brought into the world. And then this idea of blooming where I'm planted, right? So as a parent, 
you know, you, you want to fix everything. <laughs> and I remember um, growing up, I always wanted to fix everything. And my mom finally just took me out on the porch and she just did this 360 thing with me and said, look around. There are people that you can help right here in our neighborhood. And you don't have to save the world. You can save it one person at a time. And I realized that we can do that through our parenting and we can do that through just blooming where we're planted and taking a look around. And maybe we just have a neighbor who needs someone to talk to or they need their lawn mowed because they're elderly or so it's just, so I'm so grateful one for, for parenting, but just um, for the experiences and um, things that it's been able to give me so that I can grow as a person and evolve consistently. So super blessed. I love it. it. It does go by quicker than you think. Everybody told me that and uh, I didn't believe it. And I'm seeing it myself now um, <laughs> so much faster. You know, closing things out and kind of pulling it back around. What's been your favorite part of being involved in fleet? Oh, I, I love the industry. I love the people. I love the impact that we have on each other, the collaborations, how well we work together. Many of us are competing with one another, but I find that this venue is so unique. This community is so unique. We share best practices. We help each other. We solve big problems and we solve problems like safety and, and impact on the environment. And these are huge things that we do. And I think we've been able to, um, socialize our impact so much more than we've been able to in the past. What I've loved so much is now we're sharing the impact that we're having on people, um, saving lives through accident prevention, the um, impact that we're able to have on environmental change, even though we drive lots of miles um, as a collective group. And I just like the idea of this lesson of never stop researching or learning or evolving. We're like the future is now group, right? We're always, you know, thinking at least five years out. And I think our commitment to like change and evolution is unmatched. And yeah, it's just, a, it's a great fun collaborative group. And I feel super uh, blessed to be a part of it. And I hope I can keep giving back to, to it as much as possible in this role and in whatever the future has in store. I love it. You know, fleet management, saving lives and saving the world one vehicle at a time, right? Yep, exactly. Well, you know, <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today and share a bit about your passion for fleet and your personal story. For anyone interested in learning more about IntelliShift or for more episodes of Faces of Fleet or Truck Chat, check out the links below. And as always, thanks for tuning in. Hit that like button and comment below to let me know who I should chat with next. And be on the lookout for more episodes of Truck Chat coming soon, where I'll continue to focus on the people and the issues that matter most to work truck fleets. <laughs>